So picking up this uh, this book again tonight before I do other stuff or go to sleep. Let's get to it. So this is the first diagram, which is number six. I could probably afford to scroll down a little bit more. There. So this one's black to play, as evidenced by the B next to the diagram 6. <coughs> the instant thing that comes to mind is to play a move like H takes G3, but it doesn't seem especially threatening, so I'm, I'm kind of looking for more forcing ideas here. I like the queenside pawn structure for black. This kind of banana boat with a6, b5, c5, d6 is pretty good. Um, that's a potential pass pawn later in the game. Right now black is um, probably obligated to defend the h-pawn. Like if we try something active on the queen side like b4, they'll probably like take take and move the knight and then we still have to deal with this this pawn hanging on h4. Um, yeah they could probably take twice on or they could take on b4 and then play knight a4 something like that. Or maybe even um, yeah I don't see anything wrong with knight a4 seems perfectly good. Or maybe knight e2 if black really is obligated to take on g3 because their knight would look really good on f5. So I think b4 doesn't make that much sense so I'm kind of turning towards like knight g6 and g5 moves that defend h4. G5 actually looks pretty good. It's a sort of thematic Benoni type move. Uh, even though this is not a Benoni, you can tell because they haven't played G6. Um, Fian Kiddoing, the kingside bishop, is a essential element of the modern Benoni. So I'm looking at G5. They have to retreat to C1, D2, or E3. Uh, let's just say C1, 2 illustrate the point. Welcome Muter Master. After Queen C1, I think now I want to take on G3. With the idea that if they play FG3, my knight on E5 is nigh invincible. I think it looks pretty good. <clears throat> I don't know how I will continue after that, but I like establishing this very good knight on E5. So I am locking in my answer as G5, Queen C1, and Pawn takes G3. If they play f4, maybe I should maybe I should consider f4 before I lock it in. Um, Eater Master, this is some kind of mix. I'm really not that sure. This is a book that I've heard is very good. It's called uh, Perfect Your Chess. It's by Volo Keaton. You can kind of tell because all these positions have Volo Keaton's name on them. So I find it highly unlikely that anyone would select all games from a single player if they were not that person, unless they are, I don't know, borderline obsessed with a certain someone, you know, secret admirer, perhaps. Um, anyway, that's the guy. This is his book, and it seems like each position is some kind of mix. Uh, the chapters are sorted based on these themes. He calls them make a move, which is supposed to be about intuition, find the win, which I guess is like calculation, and answer a question where I'm guessing there will be prompts and we have to answer them. So it's probably a mixture of strategic and purely tactical play. Um, strategic play always in involves some degree of 
um, tactical nonsense. So I don't know the way I think about chess. It's like every chess is just a positional game. We play positions, so it's not always like there's position chess and then there's non-positional chess. I think it's all positional chess, especially because as you go um, higher up in the levels, you end up needing to incorporate positional elements to select your candidate moves and calculate tactical lines. So I think here I actually can tolerate f4 because after f4, um, oh, I was thinking I could get queen h4, but that's not true. I still have a pawn on g5. Anyway, I should take queen takes and then then my pawn on g3 is kind of hanging. Actually, instead of taking, I should probably play knight g4 with the idea of playing knight f2. That kind of jives better with my my idea of what's good. So pro probably that's the answer. G5 will be my final final answer. Yeah, this guy did take his games and make a book about um, positional tactical stuff, but he also made sure to classify it based on some uh, thinking technique themes, which I think is important to keep in mind. It's not just a random like, here's all my games. I'm super good. Uh, you know, it's not like that kind of narrative. I think he has a real purpose behind it all. Okay, so let's go to this next one. Diagram seven. Yeah, I think I got this right. Yeah, and this is white to play. And I think I've seen this position before, so it'll be kind of embarrassing if I get this wrong. Pretty sure I've seen this. This probably came from a classical Sicilian. Uh, maybe I haven't. Maybe I haven't. I'm not sure. Oh, I know what game I'm thinking of. It's Strapunsky versus Wojciechek. Wojciechek played this opening a lot. So, I don't think I've seen this one, but something similar, no doubt. Um, hmm. And of course, if you guys have ideas, I don't really mind um, talking a little bit about ideas. If you if you know the answer for sure, like if you've read the book and you check the answer, don't tell it. But like if you're if you're solving it, feel free to say something. I think the, the move is probably f five. I'm just wondering what happens if they take on e five. At the same time, I feel pretty happy if they take on e5 because um, I want to open the position. I want to attack. But there is this concrete thing where they can take on e5, queen takes e5, um, and play bishop f6, and I'm, I'm wondering about that. I don't feel especially endangered, though, by this, this idea. Um, I could check my answers by going to the back of the chapter or, either, or the back of the book. Right now I'm just solving. Eventually I will do a stream where I'm checking all the answers. I don't want to do too much like flipping back and forth, especially since there's like a hundred examples in each chapter. I don't want to break my stride too much. I'll remember my answers, so I don't feel any pressure to check right away. So let's say I play f5, they take, I guess I should take back. I don't see anything wrong with taking back. Um, they play bishop f6. I suppose my, my qualm and my quarrel would be with the notion of moving the queen and allowing bishop takes c3. Probably not perfect. 
Unit Mastery says Knight B5, A B5, E F6. And then it just ends. <laughs> like, I don't understand. I guess you want to play Bishop B5, but like they also could block it. Like, what's the big deal? Like, even if they have to play King takes D7, is that really so bad? I, I don't think that's. I don't think that idea is working. And I also think that black wants to open the queen side to attack, potentially. I don't know, actually, because now that I think about it, I'm starting to see positions like this in a little bit of a different way. I'm, I'm not sure they actually have an attack. They might want to just play the end game here, because since castling is not very reasonable, they can't bring both rooks to the attack ever, so white should be able to defend. Um, at the same time, if we're going to give them counterplay, it's probably by sacking in peace, unless something fantastic occurs directly after that. So I'm, tr I'm trying to justify. Uh, G5 is illegal, Santosh. Right now I'm looking at F5. Like maybe F5, pawn takes E5, queen takes E5, bishop F6, and then something like... Um, queen e3. I could meet d4 with queen e4. It's not a big deal. So I'm more worried about bishop c3, queen c3, which hits, which actually hits the rook on h8. That's an important detail. And it threatens queen c6. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that f5 is my move because um, this is not such a problem. You know, like, if they take this, it's going to be pretty hard for them to save both rooks. Oh, actually, they have bishop d7, so maybe not that hard. Like, maybe they just go here. But I, I still kind of like this position. Even if I just keep giving up pawns or something, you know, first of all, I could take this pawn if I, if I want to. I could also just play a move like this. So just go for the king in the center. That doesn't seem so outlandish. Black doesn't have any active moves, as far as I can tell. I guess they could do this, but I could also choose a move that prevents them from doing that. It's not necessary that I should allow this move. Um, for instance, I could maybe play like f6. I'm, I'm basically just trying to choose my, my favorite move down the line. I, I think getting to this position is already an accomplishment, so f5 makes sense to me. The thing about bishop f3 preparing f5 is they can, they have a free hand. Like, they could probably prevent f5 entirely by taking on e5. Like, what would that even look like? You know, they take. I don't really want to have this pawn stuck here. Probably would take. Sorry, I'm trying to get my line back. Okay, so takes, takes. Maybe this is also good. I don't know. I feel suspicious because it, it looks a little bit slow, but maybe it's not that bad. I What if they just play f5 themselves? Like, say just say no. Taking knight e5? Is, is, is that even legal? Like, what do you mean? Um, if, if you mean knight d5, then yeah, one of my ideas is that if they take, I can play knight d5. I think this would be very good. That's one of my ideas. Um, obviously, they won't do that, though, because that's, that's kind of a disaster. If you mean knight d5 here, I'm not as convinced. Um, sort of just looking at different good options. Probably this is the only move, though, if I have to get real about it. I, I don't see there being a significant problem here. F4. 
for instance, if they play this, I, I have queen b6. I don't think there's ever going to be a bishop c6 problem. Like, they could play bishop c6 right now, and I can play king f8. I think this is fine. e6 after rook b6. What do you mean rook b6? Anyway, I don't want to go too deep into the weeds here because it's beside the point of solving the problem. So I'd rather get to the next one. Um, okay, I'll, I'll entertain this e6 here. Yeah, this looks pretty reasonable. Because I think you're just winning the F pawn. Yeah, I, this is probably pretty good. Hmm. Another important point to keep in mind here is that we are up in exchange, right? Sorry, not up an exchange, up a minor piece, but like we could sack the exchange is what I was what I was trying to say. So even if I have to play something really modest, I'm not confident that it's a problem. Wait, I go here. I don't think black could be worse in this situation. So I find it important to immediately play f5. Um, let's go to this next one. And it's white to play. Um, this is diagram 8, which I'm covering up by accident. Let me scroll down a little bit for you guys. Yeah, okay, now it's in view. So that's our, that's our diagram position. Hello, Jyoti. Um, I'm not playing any matches right now, but uh, you're welcome to try to solve these problems with us. This is what we're working on at the moment. This position is white to play. They are probably threatening to take on c4. One thing that I see right away is that if I play b3, I'm probably going to lose material. Um, I can calculate that in a second. Jody went down from 1800 to 1543. It's okay, don't worry. Rating comes and goes. If you train, then eventually there's nothing that can keep you from reaching the rating that you want. It just takes time. So training is good, not just playing. So the, the thing that I wanted to illustrate here is the idea that after b3, this knight is hanging. I was thinking originally of a complicated line with a double knight sacrifice to bring the bishop to c3. But you could also just play b5 here. I don't think this is um, too terrible to look at. For, for example, b4 to block the queen. I'll just go to pressure it in a different way. So I think for this reason, that since I cannot guard c4, I should play c5. I, this is just the kind of simple reasoning that I have. So th this is my final answer. I'm, I'm just going to play c5. I'd rather live without it. Yeah, I think it's just simple as that. Maybe if they... Yeah, I don't see any need to justify this further. It's just strategically better to give up this pawn. Okay. So, position 10, right here. 
Um, why don't I check the positions with Stockfish if I'm using Lychus anyway? Um, because I don't really care what Stockfish has to say about it. I I like to just take it very slowly and make sure I don't miss any uh, learning opportunity. And I think if I check the engine too quickly, it's it's likely that I'm just going to cheat myself out of a, a chance to analyze the position. So I prefer not to. When I use the engine, I usually do really deep analysis of things that I've looked at a lot because that way it... Um, like I'm actually learning something. It's not just show and tell with the engine. Okay, so this is black to play. I really use the engine very little actually. Um, I still haven't even put the engine on my games from uh, Beal, but I think I've already learned like a ton of stuff from it, from those games, but without even using the engine. So I'm I'm pretty happy with my method at the moment, and when I when I do finally turn on the engine, you know I'll I'll learn something even even more interesting because I'll also have my variations that I already calculated and, and analyzed to to look over, not just the main line. Okay, what are we gonna do? The pawn on b6 looks like it's kind of our pawn whenever. Like, we can just take it. So I'm not interested in taking it right away. I'd rather make some improvement in my position. And right now, anyway, they're threatening to take on c4, which might not be very good for us. I was thinking something like c3, queen takes c3, rook c8, but I don't think it even carries a threat. So I'm not, not thinking that way right now. Maybe what I want to do is respond to pawn takes c4 with some other, some other move. My knight on b8 is not developed, that's important. But you know, if you have an issue with my with my line, you can always provide your own line. As long as you don't go like too deep, because this chapter is about like intuition and short variations. So I don't want to analyze too much like something five moves down. There's no pawn takes b3 because of queen takes c5. I think that's pretty clear. King h8. King h8 gives white a free hand, right? I'm not sure why the answer would be that. Like, is it prophylaxis for something? I think if you play king h8, they will play pawn takes c4. Or just castle, or play bishop b2. Like, any of these moves seem perfectly good. Usually when I'm giving a, a variation, I like to give something where it's like my move, your move, and then demonstrating the idea of the first move. D4 with what idea? Like, I don't know the answer ahead of time, so I, I can't ever tell you, yes, that's correct. Um, this is my first time doing this book. So if you're playing d4, why? Um, I imagine that if you play d4, then... I would probably play bishop takes c4 check or, or queen takes c4 check. Queen takes c4 looks pretty promising because I can take on c5 if you don't play a move like queen d5. And I don't really mind trading queens so much because I will have won a pawn. In fact, I forgot to check, like, seven pawns. OK, 
Okay, so winning a pawn gives white a small material advantage. kind of cool with giving up the seed pawn right now because it seems like any way of keeping it is problematic so maybe just like develop the knight it's knight c6 if, if whatever um they have to they have to invest a move to capture on c4 but you know we can always keep material balance with bishop b6 if we want to but we also have the option to play moves like knight b4 at that point knight b4 or um yeah maybe just knight b4 so we play knight c6, pawn takes c4, knight b4. Um, maybe queen b3. I guess knight b4 is not, not doing that much. But it might not even be necessary to, to find anything. Knight c6, pawn takes c4, bishop takes b6. You know what I just realized? This took me way too long. I just realized that the knight on f5 is hanging. So that, that could be an important detail. I've just completely overlooked it. So if we play knight b4, it's actually probably working. Because if they play queen b3, then we play queen takes f5. So they have to play queen b1 at that point. Hmm, this seems kind of good. One thing that made me skeptical about d4 as well is, like, I thought the idea behind d4 is to play bishop takes g2. My issue with that is that after rook g1, move the bishop somewhere, rook takes g7, your king is under attack. So... So I'm not, not that convinced in that way, but at the same time, you know, there might be some way to, to make it work. I was considering something like bishop c8, even though it's sort of anti-positional. But they always have like knight g3 or knight h4. They're, they're not running out of squares for this knight. I thought about rook c8. with the idea of like knight c2 and then some clever bishop move just clearing the clearing the way that doesn't look like it's working so i wonder if i have enough information to make a make a decision the c pawn is going away there's nothing to do about it the b6 pawn looks like it's something that we can capture when we want um, it might not even be important. It might just be important to get all the pieces into the game. If we play knight c6, we can throw in knight b4, forcing queen b1, which could lead to this knight hanging on f5, but I don't see how yet. Maybe knight e4 with tempo, something like that. Knight e4 and knight c3 would actually be pretty good. I see some active possibilities. Maybe it's just important to get the development done and like if you lose a pawn in the process, it's not a big deal. Knight C6 seems 
like the best option. All right, I'm going with knight c6 is my move. With the idea that if they take, I can do this. They have to go here. And um, I haven't made up my mind about this part. I was thinking something like e4 or maybe knight e4. Or hmm. Yeah, I just realized I also am opening the rook with whatever knight move I make. Yeah, this seems this seems promising. I don't think I have to think too much about knight c6. All right, let's go to position 10. This is black to play. Um, white has the bishop pair. So the bishop on g7 is pretty strong. White has more space. Maybe more active pieces, arguably. I see a way that we could trade dark square bishops. I don't know if it's worth it though, because it takes so much time. And then once once I finally accomplish it, um, I think the king will be kind of weak. The, the thing that I see is this idea where I go here and then this. They could probably also avoid it but like maybe uh, maybe do this and take over the b2 square. So I'm not I'm not too happy um, with this idea. at least not at a not at a glance. So I'm looking for something else here. Another reason not to check this with the engine immediately is um, the author might have an idea that is not engine checked. I think um, the viewer who requested this book a few days ago mentioned that many of the puzzles have been, or maybe not many, but some of the puzzles have been refuted by engine analysis, which is not, not uncommon for a chess book. But I think it's really interesting um, what strong players consider solutions even when they don't have engine analysis factored in into their decision. Sometimes what, what people can find and what people find important is more more relevant than what the most approved of move might be. Well, frankly, white seems to have all the pawn breaks on lockdown. I'm tempted to say something like b5, but I also think white is quicker to the punch. For instance, b5, pawn takes b5, knight's hanging, queen takes b5. Um, bishop d3, queen b7, bishop c4. I think the bishop is much better now on c4 than, than it was on b1. At any rate, I'm not sure what black accomplished. But a move like rook c8 doesn't seem spectacular either. It could be something like f5. Okay, I guess I'm, I'm also wondering what does white want to do in the next move? I don't think it's f5 because of the move knight e5. Probably they'll play king h1 
but I'm still wondering if they have like a core idea. Like, let's say we just like just pass this for a couple moves. King H1 might be one good move. They might just double the rooks casually, like rook c2 and then rook d2. Even if you disturb a rook on d2 and bishop c3, there's rook d3 or rook d5. Maybe they want to play rook d5 and then rook d1, doubling the rooks. I don't think the d5 break works because they have that really well under control. I was thinking something like rook a d8, the idea of e6 and d5. But it's not quite working. I don't think the knight on c6 can be better prepared. In fact, all the black pieces seem kind of ready to do something. If I play queen d8, they'll probably play a move like e5. So if I'm repositioning the queen, it's probably with queen c7. But if I play queen c7, they'll play c5. Alright, so white's main breaks here are e5 and c5. I think this is a important takeaway. e5 is not happening right away because I have good control of that square. But I think c5 is actually happening. So either I should play b6 or I should try bishop b2 to a3. And not try to trade bishops. Just leave it there on a3. b6 runs into e5. So I think I actually have to play bishop b2. I think this and this and then like um, maybe they'll I'm not really sure. Um, maybe maybe king h1 And we just don't let them play c5. Maybe play like h5 or king g7 or rook c8 or rook d8. Yeah, maybe something like this. This seems perfectly reasonable to me. I think this is probably probably my solution. Okay, so let's go to this, lack, this last one, the person with the complicated name. Yeah, white does have rook d5. Okay, let's look at that briefly. Um, they could play rook d5. I think my, my pre-move is just queen c7. Because now I have knight b4. So if they play this, I'm actually going here. Mm hmm. Maybe maybe they could actually take this because um, the queens attack twice. So maybe not queen c seven. Maybe queen e six. This is my idea. I still think white is better in any case. I, I'm not. I don't think I don't see anything where I think black is like doing super well here. I I think I'm just defending against um against white's ideas. All right, 
let's go to the last one. Well, last one on this page, and then I'll probably populate the other ideas. Okay, so this is black to play. It looks like tactics time. Because they probably want to take on e4. Like if they just take twice, it looks like they're winning uh, a pawn. And they also have the luxury of choice with um, which piece they use to capture on e4. I think. So how are we going to deal with that? We could just take on d2. And maybe play like rook e, or like rook f8 perhaps. But then I think if the knight just comes back to f3, they're not they're not losing this pawn. They have bishop, knight and rook all protecting e5. We are attacking it with knight, bishop and rook. And I guess we could try to double the rooks, but they can double the rooks too. I don't really see this um, this e pawn falling. So white would continue to have more space in the better better minor pieces. The bishop on c6 is not very good looking. Not exactly a, a handsome bishop. So the knight the knight on f3 is actually busy. Um, as evidence in that line where the knight is moving back and forth. So maybe we should be trying something to defend more like knight takes e5, knight takes e5, and knight takes d2. And our knight can escape attacks by going to b3 because they played a3, so that, that makes that makes sense. So if I play knight takes e5 and they take on e4 with the bishop, that's probably the most important. The reason I don't really care about knight takes e4 is I have knight takes f3 check, pawn takes f3, and then pawn takes e4. So that looks sufficient for for at least the defense of our hanging knight. I, I also think we could play a move like f5. But this weakens the the e file considerably, and the f six square, the e six square. It just doesn't look too good. Probably, probably if I play f5, white's long-term plan would be like rerouting the bishop to a2 or b3 and playing rook to d1 and pressuring the d-pawn. At the same time, the knight on e4 is pretty good, so maybe f5 is not that bad. It's a move to consider. So let's say knight e5, um, and they play bishop e4. I should probably take on e4. But then they have knight takes e4. I was thinking originally that I don't want to play knight takes f3 because they'll play bishop takes f3, but the bishop on d4 is hanging. So this is this is actually good. I 
something is this and this. This is my main line. All right, let's go to the next page because I still have like 30 minutes to do this stuff. Okay, let me just uh, post up the diagrams real quick. It's going to be black to play. Is it this position? No. All right, here. This is the critical moment. going on here. So C3 is a weakness. That's pretty substantial. But I don't think it's weak enough that I can play rook C3 at like any point. Well, maybe. Like if the knight goes away, I could capture it, but I don't know. Like how am I going to make that knight move? For instance, um, if I just take the knight, then they'll take with the queen. I guess maybe that's maybe that's useful. Maybe I could make them take with the the queen. No, I don't know. I think I think that's good for them. They get the bishop pair for nothing. So that's not it. Anyway, the knight the knight's good on d4. I'm not sure why they would ever have to move it. So, but I don't have room to, for instance, triple on the C file. They can also double on the C file for, for the defense of the C pawn if they really want to. So putting more pressure is not the answer. Like I could play queen e8 to f8 to g7. But once I've accomplished that, they'll have rook c2 and rook ac1. And even if I could play bishop d4, queen d4, queen d4, pawn d4, rook c2, it doesn't matter. The bishop on b3 is protecting c2. So that would be much to do about nothing. So I'm, I'm kind of looking at things like queen g4. or f3 not really a5 because th i think that knight takes b5 is pretty safe um in the event that white doesn't already have pawn takes a5 i think the way white wants to improve their position is with a4 Ruiz santosh enjoy work good luck So something has to happen right now because white is playing a4. I think that's a substantial threat. 
So we should change the character of the position. So maybe F3. If they play pawn takes F3, that's probably like the most materialistic. Like if they play if they play knight F3, then there's rook C3. I think that's obviously fine. Um, so pawn takes F3 is, is the critical critical test. We do this, they do this. And I was thinking originally queen h3. With the threat of bishop d4 and bishop f3. So they probably would just defend that with, for example, bishop d1. I'm not sure if this is giving any advantage to black, but like this is a way to play. Um, it's probably a way to improve the position more than what I was thinking. Uh, may maybe like rook c4. Just kind of bullying. This is probably the best I've got. Okay, I need to save this chapter. This was Bullock Keaton versus Bilyowski. Let's find this next diagram. Diagram 13, Vescovi. Oh, we searched the wrong game. Whoops. with the queen on f2. And this diagram should be white to play, so we're going to add at least one more move in here. Yeah, this is the diagram. Okay. So king g8 was just played. Uh, a mysterious king move. They're probably just avoiding rook h3. A more common sense looking move without me even having analyzed the position is like bishop d7, but probably they're worried about. Um, yeah, actually, rook h3 wins the queen on f2. So probably king g8 was forced, or bishop h6, which, yeah, it's, it's all kind of complicated in white's favor. So I think king g8 made sense. It's tempting to just play a move like rook takes e5, but I think after queen c5, it's not necessarily helping. Um, like, for example, I could play knight e4 to keep things forcing, but I think queen c7 is very normal. hard to really justify trapping your own rook like this. Uh, the rook on a1 is the main piece that's not in the game at the moment. So another another idea that makes sense is like rook c1 to c2. I wonder about a move like knight to c4 though because subjectively the rook on e3 is pinned even though it's also um, well placed in some sense this makes me f actually think that maybe it's important to play something more forcing more more critical like knight takes d5 just blow the position open um, pawn takes d5 queen takes d5 
and one move that I might want to play next is rook f1. That way I'm activating the rook on, on a1, but I'm not giving black any time for counterplay. So they have one move, knight d5, pawn d5, queen d5. They have one move exactly to do something useful. It's worth mentioning that if they make a knight move, I, I have the idea now of playing rook to e8 check. And that would win the queen and possibly the game in different ways. So that's pretty promising. In fact, since this chapter is about intuition, I'm going to double down and just say that knight d5 is super appealing. I don't feel a need to calculate um, deep variations to justify this, this move. I want to take, take, and take. Yeah, all this, this just looks good. All right, moving on. The next diagram, I'm scrolling down a little bit so you guys can see, is Bologan versus Bolo Keaton. Bologan's a nice guy. Old school dude um, with many games and books. Bologan versus Bolo Keaton. Let me find that game. This is from 2003. I'll never ever find out how chess base decides whether I'm sorry what how light chess decides whether to name the chapter chapter number or after the players. I wish I could force it to just name the chapter after the players to avoid further clerical nonsense. Okay, so we're looking for a position with the queens on b6 and g5. this it yeah this is it so this is a critical moment and I think it's black to play here yeah it's black already so white probably wants to play something like h5 or queen takes e5 Black might have ideas like rook takes f3. But allowing queen takes e5 is probably a major concession. And not the fun kind of concession. Uh, black might also want to attack on c2. It, it occurs to me actually now that um, black is down in exchange. So. Finding black's best move here is probably of the utmost importance. If I want to build up an attack on c2, I probably need to involve the bishop. For that reason, I'm kind of expecting to sack the e-pawn and try to capture on e4. For instance, like rook takes f3, queen takes e5, and some sort of good rook move, or maybe even... Um, Queen's, queen c6 or something. I, one thing that I have to avoid is queen e8, which will, could be either forcing the rook to retreat from an active position, or it could be mate. So it moves like queen b5, queen c6, queen e6. Um, those moves all make sense. I want to free the rook to do something useful. But I'm also worried that if I don't take the pawn on f3, that white will make sure that that never happens by playing a move like rook h3. So let's say I, I play some, some move like some slow move. Like queen c7, let's just pretend. Guards e5, menaces c2. 
Let's say they play rook h3. Do I still have something good here? I'll draw an arrow. This is what I'm thinking about. Sure, I actually feel pretty not optimistic about this position. I think I, I can't really allow queen e5, and I should probably not allow rook h3. So queen e6 makes sense, but I'm, but I'm not sure that queen e6 is actually accomplishing much. Like, what am I really doing if if they play like also rook d3 or rook? Or rook d f1. Those moves also seem perfectly valid. Maybe I want to play a5, a4. It seems a little bleak, frankly. Um, just I'll just give a sample line. Maybe, maybe we can see how how bad it is. Really, sometimes I I see the right idea, but it just looks depressing to me, and I. I don't choose it. So let's say I go here and they they play something like this. Mm, actually, let's say rook d3. And all right, let's, let's say rook f1. That was my original idea. And I play a5. They play this. If I if I try to make this like a race, How am I doing? How's my driving? I expect to see a move like this. Well, you know what? I get to play d3. This is a major accomplishment. This was just a sample line, you know, like. So maybe maybe rook d3 is what needs to be done. But I was hesitating to play this because it doesn't support this rook, so there there could be some some rookie issues there. Um, I also have this idea of potentially playing bishop a6, and the rook would have to go back anyway. Like this this already looks looks pretty good, so maybe just stopping white from taking on e5 is the answer. Just just queen e6, and also stopping rook h3. That's why it's queen e6 and not like queen c7. It's active, and we have the idea to play a5. That could be right. Okay, let's scroll back up to this diagram. Volkin versus Sapunov, whoever that is. And this is going to be white to play. Sapuna Matata. What a wonderful phrase. Oh, I um, I searched the wrong. play again 2004 I wrote it wrong again dang it okay so I'm looking for a position with a pawn on f6 it I'm flipping a lot well they must move and then it's white to play so it's okay this this is it 
and I'm probably going to turn in after this example. I think this is my last one for now. Alrighty, so white to play and do something good. It would be convenient if I could deflect the knight from c6 because I would have something like bishop h6, rook e8, knight e7, or maybe just straight up knight e7. Entertaining the idea of checkmating them or forcing them to give up their queen. So b4 is a move that looks good because they have to take with the a pawn. Um, I'm just wondering if I can make them move their knight further without sacking something in an overly desperate way. Or um, maybe I should be playing like rook c1 and rook takes c5, something to um, gain the support of the people. That looks pretty, pretty good actually. Because their knight's not going to be able to move long term from c6. Their knight on c5 is their only active piece. They're threatening knight e4. If they play knight takes e4, I could play rook takes c6, winning the queen. I think I would have excellent compensation. So I'm going to lock in rook c1 with the idea of rook takes c5. For instance, if they do this to avoid it, I take here. And I win the queen. That's really good. Um, so if they if after rook c1, if they what else could they even do here? Maybe they could do this. This might be reasonable. I thought I could take here and win a, like, so I was, I was thinking that if they do something, um, I don't know, like this, that I could take, take, and take here with a reasonable position. But maybe they could do this and then I, I would be sacking like this. I don't know, I think I'm gonna stick with my answer for now just because I'm tired. I think it's about time for me to wrap up here. So I still have um, the next two to do. And how close am I even to the end of the, the problem set? I think. Oh, I haven't even done the 100 graded examples. Let me check the structure of this book again. All right, it says examples from the play of Andre, and then 100 graded examples, and then the solutions. Okay, so there's still a hundred more positions after I finish the first. Um, the first 23. That's a substantial number of exercises to, to complete. So that's nice. All right, well, thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you guys later and we can keep working on this book until it's done. Until next time, good luck with your chess. Take care.